was a place with all the sick of new Kakana. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Nuka World. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a guide in which I will show us how to acquire the not quite unique but rare Western Revolver. And of course to acquire this weapon you will need the Nuka World DLC installed. Now it's not particularly hard to acquire the two Western Revolvers in the game but they are easily missed. So the first time you come to Dry Rock Gulch you'll have to talk to one of the sheriffs. It doesn't matter but for this example I'm going to be using Sheriff Eagle. On the Pip-Boy map he can be found here, at the eastern entrance to Dry Rock Gulch. Now when we come through and talk to him he said he's looking for a new deputy and this is basically all just some flavor text and story for the quest in which you have to clear out Dry Rock Gulch for the main storyline of Nuka World. But he says his three robot companions will each have a third of the safe code you need to get the key to open Mulligan's mine which again is part of the main quest. And after speaking to him we'll get this other quest High Noon at the Gulch. And once we get that quest of Sheriff Eagle, we want to walk down the street. Quite simple. About halfway down the street on the right, there is a blacksmith's building, and standing in the door is One-Eyed Ike. This is one of the robots holding one of the thirds of the safe combination, but for him to give it to us, we can either pass a speech check or do a quest for him. And to get it off him, there are a couple of ways we can do it, but if you want the Western Revolver, you must accept to duel him. Once accepting to duel him in the street, he will say you are not properly equipped, and then he will give you a Western Revolver. If you do not select the option to duel him, i.e. you use your robotics perks to bypass him or you use a speech check to bypass that part of the quest, you will not get the Western Revolver off of One-Eyed Ike. And in case you can't find One-Eyed Ike, he's located right here on the Pip-Boy map. Now if you didn't get that Western Revolver, don't worry, because later on in the same quest, we will have to go inside Mad Mulligan's Mine. Mulligan's Mine is also inside the area Dry Rock Gulch and it has its own map marker so it is almost impossible to miss. Once inside we want to head down the mining tunnel to the right. About 5 to 10 seconds into walking down this tunnel there is a little offshoot tunnel to the right. We want to walk down here and hidden slumped behind some barrels and boxes we will find the corpse of Terry Tanaka and in his inventory will be the second western revolver. So both of those are pretty easy to miss but again quite easy to get if you know what you're doing. And just to be super safe Terry Tanaka Tanaka's corpse can be found right where my character's standing on the local map. Of course, inside Mad Mulligan's mine. As always, before modding out the weapon and looking at its base stats, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bubblehead or magazine effects applied to my character, however, I do have some perk effects applied to my character. Specifically, the gunslinger perk, and the reason for this? To make most of the modifications that go on the Western Revolver, you need a very high level of the gunslinger perk. So although it will be affecting the damage, we can do some simple maths to figure out the actual base damage of the weapon. So now let's mod the Western Revolver out. First of all, I'm going to be going with the Advanced Receiver. This gives exceptional damage and improved rate of fire. Secondly, we're going to go with the Long Barrel, which makes the weapon look absolutely ridiculous but gorgeous at the same time. This gives exceptional range and better recoil. Third we're going with the Sharp Shooter's Grip. This gives better recoil and hip fire accuracy. It will also change the colour of the wood on the handle to a nice bone white. And fourthly, we're making up words and going with the standard sights. Now you could go with the scope or the reflex sights to juice just a little bit more accuracy out of the weapon, but I am more than willing to sacrifice that tiny bit of accuracy to preserve the absolutely gorgeous aesthetic of the Western Revolver. Now once the Western Revolver has been modded out the way I just did, it has a ballistic damage of 210, but we need to remember that that damage is being doubled by the maxed out Gunslinger perk. So if we halve 210, we end up with 105, which is the actual base damage of the weapon. So it's got a base damage of 105 ballistic damage. It uses the 44 rounds as ammunition. It has a fire rate of seven. Its range is 197. Its accuracy of 71. Its weight is 7.8 pounds and its value is 197 caps. And as we can see up the top, if you modded out the way I did, it will now have this new name 
name, Sharpshooter's Advanced Western Revolver. And kind of sadly, there's no legendary effect on it. So first of all, if you are wondering, yes, there are only two Western Revolvers in the game, both of which I showed you how to get. If you did miss the first one, the second one is a guaranteed location, so you will be able to get at least one of them. And yes, the Western Revolver is commonly confused with 44 pistols, as they look very similar and they use the same kind of ammunition, the 44 rounds. Now before we talk about how gorgeous the weapon is aesthetically, let's talk about it in use and in comparison to the 44 pistols. Now I'm sure I've made it very clear at this point, but there's only two Western Revolvers in the game and you will never find one with a legendary effect, which automatically does give it a little bit of a downside in comparison to a 44 pistol. So the Western Revolver's not exactly off to a good start, but don't worry, it does make a comeback, as sure as the sun at high noon. Yeehaw! Anyway, so just like the 44 pistol, it uses the 44 rounds as ammunition. Yep, that's pretty good. It has the same fire rate, which is seven. You can fire off a bullet about every second, and it holds six bullets. Now the base damage, the 44 pistol has a base damage of 84, whereas the Western Revolver has a base damage of 105. So already the Western Revolver has a 21 base damage head start over the 44 pistol, which once you get all perked up makes a huge difference. Now the 44 pistol has a range of 119, whereas the Western Revolver has a range of 197. That's a range difference of 78 in the Western Revolver's favor. That's a big difference. Unfortunately, the Western Revolver has a slightly lower accuracy, sitting at 71 compared to the 44 pistol's 82. When fully modded out like this, compared to a fully modded out 44 pistol, it's also a pound heavier. And its value, although it means nothing, it has a considerably smaller value than a fully modded out 44 pistol. So the Western Revolver is a little bit heavier, has a slightly worse accuracy, has the same fire rate, the same ammunition. Its range is about 150% that of a 44 pistol, which is amazing and also makes it viable for long range shots. But where it really stands out is that base damage, a 21 base damage difference, again in the Western Revolver's favor. And that big downside of never having a legendary effect is actually outweighed by its huge base damage. In some cases anyway, if we compare it to say the Gainer, which is a 44 pistol, but each bullet does 15 points of fire damage. Even on a base damage level, the Western Revolver is still better than the Gainer. And once we max out all the perks, the Western Revolver will be sitting on a damage of 301, whereas a 44 pistol will be sitting on 241. So the Western Revolver is sitting at 60 more damage per bullet compared to a 44 pistol. So although it can't have a legendary effect, it still hugely outweighs most 44 pistols with legendary effects. Now the Western Revolver may not be too good for say crowd control, but if you're fighting one to four to five enemies, it's a really decent weapon for packing a huge punch really quickly. Again, perked out, it was sitting at a damage of 301 ballistic damage per bullet, which in terms of king hitting, you know, it's sitting around like shotgun damage. And it's actually the best pistol in the game in terms of per bullet damage. Although not being the solution to every situation, it is a welcome addition to my armory. And along with actually being usable in game, it's a beautiful weapon. Compared to the 44 pistol, even just the metal is much cleaner. There's a lot less rust and signs of wear. It also has, dare I say it with my incredible lack of gun knowledge, it has a much more old school look, a less modern look than the 44 pistol, which adds a certain romantic air to its aesthetic. But my favorite part is the grip, that beautifully polished old wooden handle. Absolutely gorgeous. I must admit, if you hadn't figured it out yet, I do quite like this weapon. And if you were having trouble finding the gun, I would suggest you take a west turn. If you do this while spinning around repeatedly, you will undoubtedly find the Western Revolver. And here it is in its old school cowboy fashion, the Western Revolver in action. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide for the not unique but very rare Western Revolver in Fallout 4's DLC Nuka World. I do hope the video helped you in finding the weapon and also in understanding how it can be better than a 44 pistol. If the video did help you out and you would like to see videos similar to this one, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you are a fan of long, hard, wood, and pistol grips, then please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here with me. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.